Hi, this is Campbell or Ideas Man 42 from the forums and I'm just going to do a video on how to navigate Blender's source code. So the first thing I'd suggest to do if you're starting out is to have a quick way to search the source code. It um I mean it can be any way, but I'd recommend if you're on a Unix based system especially uh to have a command line tool. I've got a grep wrapper that's nothing special. There's a number of tools like this available online. Um, and I'm just going to search for, say, um, mesh drawing, if I want to find that mesh drawing. So let's just look up draw. Yep, it's going to be pretty big, so. Okay, there's a whole lot of drawing code there. Okay, it's drawing the window, the screen. This isn't too interesting. So, hmm drawing the Z buffer, but man, that's not interesting. So maybe use, uh, you can pipe because each uh, result is a line. You can pipe this to grep, even though this is a grep wrapper. I'm using a grep wrapper piping to grep, it works fine. And uh, type in mesh, because we don't know if it's draw mesh or mesh draw or underscore separator or not, this kind of thing. Okay, um, <clears throat> and following on from that, we don't really want update because that's telling it to update the draw. So without going into lots of details about grep, there's two things that I use quite a bit, and that is uh, V to exclude, even though it's probably possible to, to write some very you know, uh, complicated grep string to do this. I just generally chain them together because it's uh, easier for my brain to think about. So we don't want anything about update. And just for good measure, I don't care if it's cap under uh, capital update or lowercase update, I don't want any update. So let's clear the screen and run again. It's still quite a lot of results, probably because there's a file called draw mesh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, and that might even contain, well, likely will contain the functions that you want to look at. Although there is, is some calls from draw object. So. draw mesh object outline. So even though that's not exactly the draw mesh function, we know the outline gets drawn quite a bit. So that's uh, it's an example of just using grep anyway to, to find a function. And I think this, if you, if you look at this, well, I'll actually, I'll actually pop it up and, and, and check, check out the code. Okay. Um, draw mesh instance. So this brings us sort of to IDEs, because I've got Qt Creator open here, but all the things that I'll mention are pretty much supported by all the popular IDEs, nothing's really specific to Qt Creator. So um, now we've got this, we can see where it's used, and I find this a very handy way, it's not the best example actually, because it's only used once, but if you want to know where, if, like, how a function is called, it's very nice to be able to say where is it used, find usages, it's probably a better example, you can see it's called from the viewport object reconstruction, gee that's quite a hefty function name, and um, drawing the object draws the axis, yeah it's called from a few places, so draw object, okay, alright, um, so that's just an example as to, you know, using a regular, uh, using a grep wrapper and regular expressions, um, in the command line, but you can use an IDE, of course. Um, I actually haven't opened the project file. I need to open that to, so we can search all the files. Um, and I, I like using grep because it's a simple text search. You can use it for any project. You don't need to set up a, a project file with an IDE or anything. It's just a, it just works easily. But um, I'll just um, give some examples of searching uh, through the IDE. Now I, I often use uh, regular expressions a lot and if you haven't used them I'd suggest at least learn one thing. If you only learn one thing it's the sort of the wild card. You've probably used star dot text for example where you know the star is anything whereas in uh, grep, well not grep sorry, regular expressions it's uh, anything is dot star so both characters together. I probably shouldn't have used the star.text example. It confuses it a little bit. But anyway, mesh draw 
and you can see here it's got a whole lot of combinations of mesh and draw. Um, yeah, so that's that's, that's nifty. Um, and there's a few other things I use too, like uh, you might want to say any character. Um, any number, you can do things like this. But there's lots of documents on how to use grep. I think probably the, well not grep, regular expressions, it's sort of the same thing, they both use the same syntax. But it's probably just most important to learn like two or three things. And uh, that's too many, it's getting every letter with every number. You could do something like, with two tabs between them. Anyway, it's just important to know that you can use regular expressions and to get started with using them, and then when there's some sort of complicated case, you can search up how to how to solve it with regular expressions because you're already a bit used to using it. It took me quite a while to, to get in to get into it and to learn it because I, I just didn't need it most of the time. Uh, okay. So probably the next thing is just a bit more about I wanted to mention a bit more about uh sort of. Uh, navigating the source. Now in Qt Creator, Creator it's control click but it doesn't really matter, It'll, most IDEs have some way to do this. Um, so it's really handy just to be able to um, go back and forward a bit like a web browser and also to find the definition. So I wanted to know what track was, now I find it's a movie track settings, control click on that, find out what movie track settings uh, structure looks like. It's got comments as to how everything is used. I can find out every user of that struct. There's a whole lot of them, so this is uh, Sergi's tracking work. And uh, I mean, that's just useful to be able to, to do that, very handy. And also to do with the structure members. So if I want to find out, uh, what's an interesting one? Hmm, where the margin, margin for frame boundaries, find out where that's used. Hmm, only one. It's not even used. Jeez, come on, Sergi, don't just add stuff and then not use it. Okay, well, maybe it is used somewhere and the IDE is failing or something, I don't know. Or maybe he's going to use it later. Anyway, you can really uh, easily navigate the source this way, and uh, I find that sort of new developers think that uh, existing developers know the source really well, but in fact, you often have to do this kind of navigation to, to get an idea in a specific area when you're, when you're looking into it to fix a problem or to add a feature or whatever. So that's sort of the first uh, thing just just to be aware of, just learn how to use your IDE to quickly flick around the source. You shouldn't have to be wondering, you know, where is this function called, how is it used? You should just not even have to think about that and find out, you know, every place that calls it very quickly. Um, now the last thing I'd like to go into is just a sort of an alternate way to, to navigate the source and that's just through using a debugger because you've got this multitude of source code to, to read through, you don't really know what's what and what's important and what's called once in a blue moon and what's called 100 times a second because there's all of all of the above, you know, there's there's code that's it's called a lot and some hardly ever. So um, a good uh, way to use a debugger is to find a function of interest. Just say, for example, we want to look at the subsurf code. So just, this is how I would go about looking up uh, subsurf. So I've just looked at files with the word modifier in them. Modifier.c seems reasonable. Or modifier types probably is even better. You see the word subsurf here. Find all usages of the word subsurf. Um, that's the outliner, that's not going to be useful. Read file, also not useful. So probably the type itself isn't actually what we want, so just continue looking at the word subsurf here. The shrink wrap modifier happens to have subsurf levels, that's interesting. And maybe it's because it's case sensitive, try. Ah, subsurf modifier data, and it was because it was case sensitive. So let's just see how the levels is used. Okay, here we go. So a good way to 
to sort of read the code, I find is to find a function nested away in the code somewhere at a breakpoint. Um, I was debugging before, just make sure I don't have any other breakpoints. No, I don't. And then I think we can just run the code. Oh, run the code, run Blender. And uh, trigger, the, trigger the breakpoint. So just add a subsurf modifier in this case. And Blender freezes. And uh, now we've got the, the breakpoint's been hit. And it's really probably the first thing to, to look at is the stack trace. Also called the backtrace sometimes, and uh, yeah, the file and the, and the and the function names are important. So you can see here it's actually started from the main function, and this is where um, the function that calls everything within Blender. So within main, it goes into the window manager's main, loops through the the event system. Uh, up, a part of that is updating the scene data, and from that, it calls the modifier stack, builds all the modifiers, and uh, applies them. So you can see, even just from a quick stack trace, you really learn a lot about what uh, how Blender works and, and and what it's doing. But sort of the interesting thing here is, well, maybe this is a little bit low level to to walk over, but you can you can see here what's running, and I'm actually just going to step out so you can look at the modifier stack. I um, have to say this code is pretty pretty hairy and not uh, probably the best place to start if you're looking at reading Blender's code. Um, it's yeah, it's fairly complicated but it's still interesting just to see that you know it's looking for object coordinates, checking if we're in weight paint mode, if it's only a deform modifier. So you can you can kind of step over the code and just see what's going on. And then it frees Data masks, banding box, checks if it's in sculpt mode. Um, yeah, so I find this a good way to to learn about an area of code quickly is just to add a breakpoint somewhere that you know is going to run and then step over certain functions. Probably worth just learning a few things, which is to step into. In this case, it's a free list function. It's quite low level, as in it's quite a basic function. Um, step over a function. So these, these are really common debugging. Um, features, all debuggers support these. Um, and st step out of a function, which is if you don't want to, you know, just step to the previous function in the in the call stack. And run to cursor, and I've set that up as a key shortcut because I find it very handy. It just means you put the cursor somewhere and then it jumps there. So, I'm probably going through a little bit too quick. Um, anyway, yeah, so just Learn to use the basics of a debugger to step over code, and then you can read through what's going on and what Blender's doing. So I think that's all. I um, hope you found that useful. Just thinking, if there's anything else that I, that I left out? Um, I mean, just don't try and learn everything at once. Try a few different tactics. Try, um, you know, search for different terms. It's it feels like you're really fumbling it at first, but it's you know that's not not unusual. You just guess. Like, for example, when I started learning Blender's code, I just the way I would do it would be to uh, find find a keyword. So you know, you just look for duplicate objects, for example. I was going to wrap it up, but now I'm just showing some more stuff. So. And it's a pretty direct way, a pretty direct way to, you know, to find the, to navigate the code. You just search for a string, and then you can, as I was showing before, control click through the different functions, contextual operator dupli, and you can sort of burrow down and find out, find out what's being what's what's being called. So, yeah, I hope you found that useful, and um, yeah, I think that's all. I think that's all. Bye bye.